This will be an overview of three tools I've written for Maya, Houdini and Photoshop respectively. For more tools and information, please visit warshaw.co.uk. This tool is a Maya asset management system for shaders, models, scenes, scripts, proxies, cameras, lights. It's written from scratch in Python based on design ideas from some sources listed in the comments. It allows the user to export new assets from their Maya scene into a single database with metadata such as categories, keywords, notes and author information. After we've exported our asset, it should be viewable in the import section. If we're on a different page, we can filter our selection by category, keyword or add our asset to our favourites. The Maya file for this asset will be stored in a database, along with the asset's thumbnail and information file. We can later go into edit mode and update any information that we want to on the asset. I'll now demonstrate the export process for a shader by creating a simple green V-Ray material. For the export to work, we must have the material selected and make sure the type in the export section is set to shader. I'll create a new category called temp, call the asset temp green V-Ray skip the notes and add temp, green and V-Ray as searchable keywords. For shaders we don't create a thumbnail because on clicking export the script will run a command line render and automatically store the image as the asset's thumbnail. I'll filter by asset name this time and I can import the newly created asset into the scene we can see it in the hypershade or directly assign it to any selected objects. If the asset had any file texture nodes, they would be copied on export to a database texture directory and on import copied to a local project directory. This tool can help artists to find scenes, models, to find and assign shaders, generally make their lives a little bit easier and improve the efficiency of their workflow. This Houdini digital asset allows the user to project textures onto the surface of a 3D model in a highly controlled way without relying on perfect UVs. The guts of the texture placement happens in a shader written in the Houdini VEX language, which is similar to GLSL. The script cycles through the created projectors and does some vector mathematics to output the correct RGBA values. Let's delete our existing projection asset, leaving just our model connected to a default UV unwrap node We'll lay down a new instance of the projection asset and target our statue model. You can see that when we do this, projection points are created around the surface of our model. We can see them a bit more clearly by turning up the icon scale. This projector, for example, would be targeting the hand of our model. The user can specify the number of projectors, the angle of projection, which, together with the distance of the projectors from the surface, will determine the scale of the texture. The user can also manually place projectors and control the texture placement style and blending style. To get a render like the one at the beginning of the video, we select our texture to project, take a render, and if we're happy with the render, we can bake out the newly created texture map with a single click. Once it's finished baking, we can see the result in the COP context of the asset, which does some final compositing on the newly created texture. Here we can see the texture being expanded around the edges of UV lines. The expand cop detects edge pixels and transfers onto them the values of their surrounding neighbour pixels. Finally, we can set the display flag to our model and assign a material with our new texture map. This example is in non-commercial with a fairly low res texture, but in a couple minutes we already have a relatively interesting material. This tool written in JavaScript is an extension of Photoshop's native stacking script, allowing the user to stack EXRs with both sRGB and Adobe profiles. Files that contain the value in this text field will be assigned an Adobe profile. All other EXRs will be assigned sRGB and converted to working Adobe. The tool also has optional functionality to create lighting passes and create alpha channels from IDs. We can see the script bringing in each file individually, assigning either Adobe or sRGB appropriately. As a final flourish, it'll organize the lighting passes and create alpha masks for the only ID EXR. We can see that the alpha masks have been created for our ID and check it's assigned an Adobe profile by checking it has pure red, blue and green values, which it does. We can check that the others have been brought in with sRGB profiles by opening the GI layer separately, assigning sRGB and comparing it with our GI layer. The tool has multiplied our raw light by our diffuse layer and added this to our reflect, refract and illumination layer, 
we also have exposure controls for specular and reflection.